Yo, hey guys, my name is Sipsa Malumani and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm back again, not with a book review video today. Um, I've decided to do a series uh, which I titled Pressures Of and this first video is um, Pressures In Your Mid Twenties, um, The Ladies Session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, a lady session, a Jane session and a combined session um, for the mid 20s and probably if I'm successful I'll also have one on the mid 30s. So I'll be discussing um, a few questions with um, about five or six ladies um, that you will meet um, as soon as possible. So if you are still interested or you are intrigued in what pressures um, we face in mid 20s, please stay tuned to find out. First, we'll start Thank with you. introductions, right? So, okay, let me just explain how or what my plan is with this whole thing, right? So I'm having this session with you guys, so which is um, pressures in your mid twenties, and then I'm gonna have the same session with um, a group of guys who are also in their mid twenties, and then I'm ideally we're gonna have a group session where it's both the guys and the and the ladies. If you guys are still keen to also make the final um, conversation where it's everyone, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 30 year olds. Yeah. So we're going to start with introductions. So I'll start. And then um, according to my screen, Fifi, you're going to be first. And then it's going to be Mugwena. And then it's going to be Malebo. And then it's going to be Lois. Nay. You guys right. saw what, I, um, sure. what, what you need to include as your introduction. So yeah. So my name is Haviso Malumani. I'm 24 and I'll be turning 25 in September. I work as a tax analyst in the beer industry and I am single and I don't have any kids. Yeah. Fifi, your turn. Hi guys. Um, my name is Rufilwe Mufukeng. I am 25 turning 26. I am a tax consultant at KPMG. I am in a relationship but single, as in I'm not married. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't have kids yet, but I would like to have a child or two in a few years yeah so uh, my name is Mugwena Holonjo and I'm 24 years old turning 25 in a couple of days um, I <laughs> I'm in marketing and I'm in the beer industry so yeah that's that and then I am single very single <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do plan to get married and I don't have kids. I do want to have kids, but the number keeps decreasing every year. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Malebu Mama Bolo. Um, I'm 25 and currently I'm still finishing off my biochemistry and I work as an admin at this NGO where we help vulnerable kids we also offer support for the education and stuff and um, I'm in a relationship it's been a year now and I don't have kids yet yeah your turn Lois uh -huh. I don't know if you guys can hear me because I'm really struggling with like network issues. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we can. Oh, okay. All right. Um, hi everyone. My name is Lois. I'm 26 years old. I'm a banker by profession and currently running a small side hustle with a fitness, um, little thing. <laughs> and my relationship status is I'm, actually customarily married <laughs> so yeah and that's what else soon okay no i don't have any children yay still waiting for the wedding <laughs> 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 okay 
Okay, guys. Okay. So we're going to have um, three main topics, right? Um, so we're going to cover careers, we're going to cover uh, financials, and then we're going to cover relationships. Or oh, I think in the way that I sent the questions, we just going to go the way I sent the questions to you guys, right? So the first question, um, you don't all have to answer. You can answer whatever you are comfortable with answering. And um, But I would like participation with all of the questions, probably, even if it's just one person who answers. Yeah. So the first question is um, under the topic career. And the first one is, do you think that societal standards, way, uh, societal standard way of how we need to go through life in terms of careers is the best way? So what I mean is, do you think we need to go to school, go to university, graduate, then get a job? Or do you think there are other ways that people can actually establish their own careers? Um, it does not always have to be um, via school, um, via universities and stuff. So maybe like looking at the creative space or sports and so on and so on. What are your views on that? Who would like to take that question? Um, I can, can I it. add you? Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe you could both take it. Um... <laughs> I feel like it puts, I, I don't think it's the best way per se. Um, I think it puts unnecessary pressure on, on children mm -hmm. because as in matric, uh, in grade 10 already, you need to be deciding which path you're going to take and you're like barely 16 and you're already expected to choose whether you want to be doing like commerce subjects or sciences which is ultimately going to lead you to what you're going to do in varsity and stuff and i don't think that's the best way for everyone um but obviously as people were different so i know my strengths are more on the academic side so it only made sense for me to go to university but for someone more creative varsity doesn't make sense so i think parents as well put a lot of pressure on on like young children to already know what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives so i don't i don't really think it is the best way so do you think the problem starts in grade 10 so we shouldn't be making those choices that soon that soon yeah i i think it's i'm not sure which other way we could actually do it but i know at like in grade 10 i was focused on other things and that much pressure to already know what you're going to be when you're 26 for me didn't make sense at all okay Lois you were saying um, I, I feel the same way as well and actually agree with um, with what Rufilo is saying because I feel that it does also put a lot of unnecessary pressure um, I think I'm going to kind of use my own example, um, you know, with leaving high school. It, I was a, under a lot of pressure, right, with getting into varsity and all of that, that I, I took the unconventional route of studying. So I was, I'm actually still studying part time while working full time. And it has allowed me to see so much more now and decide what I really want to do because we are always put under that pressure of, oh, you need to be this or you need to be that. And then when you get into that industry, it's not what you thought it would have been. Mm -hmm. um, so for the route that I've taken, as much as it has been very stressful and requires a lot of discipline, it has actually helped me to figure out where I want to be in the industry that I'm in. Nice. So you didn't go the societal route? No, not at all. Can I also answer on that? Um, mm -hmm. I think with all, of, I mean, obviously when you're creative, you want to not go to university. You don't want to do academics. You just want to go straight into your craft. Um, but the problem with me is that schools don't give those many opportunities right mm -hmm. there, there's not many options there's science there's commerce and that's it and for me i chose science and i mixed that with commerce um only to get to university and do media and also having done media i only chose it because i was like okay this is the closest thing i know ish of where i want to be 
and I'm not sure if this is even the right course. Um, and having, if, if in high school, having to choose subjects in grade 10 or whatever, I really think that if we had more options mm. and not, and when, um, you know, career counselors come to schools and they say, okay, these are the different options. They only give options for uh, science students and the engineering and mm. uh, accounting, and that's it. And then the other kids get left behind. So I never actually even knew what I wanted to do. I just had an idea, but I didn't know how to even go about it. So the only route that I knew was, okay, let me just go to varsity. Let's see how that works out. So it's a bit, it's it's very problematic in that sense. Yeah, true, true. I, I agree on that, especially when they, when they do these career fairs in high school, you always get the same stream of people coming in, you know, you know, you, you don't get exposed. And like, if you're in grade 10, grade 11, and that's all you are getting, that's what you most likely, you know, want to study or want to follow. Yeah. Okay. Question two, do you think you are where you thought you'd be now when you set the goal whenever in high school? So when you were in grade 12 and you were leaving school and you were thinking of this age do you think you are where you thought you'd be at this age um, <laughs> um for me i'm not um i think growing up everything was kind of made to be to seem basically black and white that you gotta go through high school, go to varsity, get your degree and start working. Mm. And that's not how things go. They never actually prepare you. Like even my family ne didn't necessarily prepare me that things could go wrong. Um, things aren't always going to go the way you expect them to. So for me, I had to learn that on my own and mm. navigate through it. But obviously with their support, but um, I think had I learned or had I been prepared for that I would have handled some situations way better so for me no but I'm still working on it obviously okay yeah. anyone else yeah for me it's no and yes <laughs> um firstly because in matric I had no idea what I was going to do um all I wanted to do was be in media I wanted to do tv and all of that not on TV yet, so I'm not where I want to be in terms of that. But um, in terms of the level of, I would say, success that I'm at, I think by tw at 25, I've kind of learned that, okay, maybe I won't have everything together, but I will have these things. And this is where I've learned from my brothers and sisters. Um, and I saw how, they, how their journey went. And I was like, okay, fine. This is kind of how it's going to go. So in that sense of where I am now, I think it's, it's kind of um, went beyond my expectations. But in terms of my dream dream, I'm not at all close to where it is, to where I wanted to be at 25. Yeah. Okay. I think I thought I was going to be married at 25. <laughs> so far from it. <laughs> Most of us. <laughs> okay okay so we'll move um do you think you are still figuring yourself or have you established your path is it clear where you want to go yet or do you think you're still trying to see what you want to do in life or what your purpose is in life career wise jeez that's a loaded question <laughs> but um I feel like I'm still figuring myself out because um, I'm like a very practical person so I went for for something I know I'm good at and the the chances of failure are very slim because you know it's like I said something I'm like very good at but it's not what I'm passionate about so only now am I considering a career change, which needs further studies. Mm. So I'm basically going to be starting over at 26 to actually do 
what I love because what I was chasing by going on this path, like I've realized that's really not what I wanted to spend the rest of my life on. Mm. And yeah, now I'm, I'm going to do what I actually want to do. Yeah, I think a lot of people relate to that. I think most of us kind of went for security. Yes. Um, we, we, we chose careers that we thought would be safe in, you know. And now I'm just figuring out, yeah, there's mm-hmm. actually more that I'm actually, that I want to do or something else that I'm more interested in than what I chose. Anyone else want to take that question? Should I move? Uh- Okay. I think it also goes back to the first question regarding um, the schooling career. Um, that's because most people are under pressure at that point to choose um, career paths. And you only get to figure yourself out around the age of 20, 21. That's when you get to figure out who you are, what you want in life. And by then, it's kind of too late. Um, for me as well, I feel like I've kind of figured out the path, but I'm not sure which branch to take, if I may put it like that. Mm, So I'm also at a two-way street where I'm like, this is the path, but there are different branches that that are there. So which one do I take? I don't know. I'm still figuring that out. Okay. Okay, so all of us here are working, right? Um, So this question says... How did your family perception of you change as soon as you started working? Do you think there was less control and do you think you've gained a little bit more power? So, you know, before you're working, your, your parents are probably, or your guardians are probably like in full control of your finances. And sometimes they even have control over your life. But like, um, how did that change as soon as you started working? Well, to me, <laughs> being now born, like everything was controlled. Like every single thing was controlled. Where I went, what I did. So I've had like a very um, at home kind of life, you know? So when I started working, that shifted a lot and that kind of scared me. I was like, oh, okay, so now I can make my own decisions, you know? So they gave me that kind of power per se to make my own decisions and um, just go about the way I would want to go about life because usually they would advise me but they won't advise me they would be telling me yeah. <laughs> this is what you're going to do so um, having to start working and you know now being your own person they now start taking you a bit seriously they're like oh, okay you can make decisions even though you've been telling them hey guys I can't make my own decisions but now there's just a bit of okay, she's an adult, this is what you, you're going to do with your money, so we don't want to get involved. So those kind of things. So for me, yeah, it's been less of a heavy hand from them. Yeah, on my side, it's kind of the opposite of you because I'm a firstborn. And so that was more pressure and the control there was um, probably more like the ball is in your court you're the eldest child so you should know what you have to do for the family and this is kind of probably way like black uh, what you call it black tax mm. came in for me being the, the the eldest sibling in the house and i felt as much as they weren't controlling me and how i make money decisions because of me starting to work it was based on my position as the oldest child that you should know and you should know better and how to spend your money with the family and not just by yourself selfishly. So that was, it was for me a very challenging time when I started working. I had the pressure of, you know, I felt like I was raising a family even. Um, so for me, it was, it was, it was a hectic time with my first job. Okay. Um, I think Songs asked to say something. Songs, are you going to answer this question also? I was going to leave because they spoke for the first born and last born. <laughs> I was going to leave this question. Um, I'm also a last born, guys. Um, you are so. You sound so far. Do I? Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Is it better? Yes. 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 Alright. Um, I'm also a last born. 
Um, for me, when I started working, um, it was it wasn't very difficult. Cult, I think maybe because I was a last born, I was really helped out a lot in terms of um, like they knew that I needed help with certain things, like I don't have anything. So my family was there to support me. But what I did receive was people started telling me about their problems for whatever reason. <laughs> Suddenly, I, I don't know if it was a perception that I was able to help now because I am working, but suddenly now so all the people too it's not even necessarily like people my age like your people in your family will start telling you that oh we must i don't know do this for the house i'm doing this or or that whereas i was never part of these conversations before i started working but now i am so i think that was the big difference or the change rather in uh, me working and not working or starting to work yeah okay interesting um do you think or do you feel like your peers are way ahead of you like where you at now with your career do you ever compare yourself to your peers and think ish you know what i'm actually way behind my peers or do you um say okay my journey okay let me not actually answer this but like let's answer the question do you ever think that you're way behind your peers or maybe way ahead of your peers what are your views of where you are in comparison to your peers if you do compare anyone for this question um, <laughs> i think um compared to my peers who had already discovered their talents in high school and went straight for that i think i'm behind with them because all my peers that already knew what they were good at and went straight ahead towards it immediately after high school, they were able to focus entirely on that. And they are, they are great really in their lives and in the careers that they're in. But when I view overall, like my friends, um, I'm pretty much on the same level. Of course, I understand my own journey and where I've, what I have done in my own life and my own career. So I understand where I am now. But yeah, I think I'm fine. I also feel like um, I'm okay. Um, but looking looking at it both ways, I feel like you know there are twenty six year olds doing amazing things you know and these are people in my circle people around me and sometimes i feel like oh my gosh i need to be much greater than this you know but i also see people who who are on the same level as me or you know also still trying to figure themselves out and honestly i comparing does does nothing for a person I think it will either lead you straight into depression or lead you into thinking you're so great and not working towards what you actually want to achieve because you feel like you're ahead of everyone else. So yeah, just I just focus on my own journey really. Okay. Okay. So next question. Most of us do have cars, right? And usually there's this um let's talk about what do you buy first you buy a house or a car first and when is the right time to move out of home like some people will be like yo why are you still living at home you you too old or whatever like like such comments do you guys think that you were pressurized in like getting your assets like maybe in getting your car first and did you also feel the pressure if you're no longer if you're not living at home anymore do you feel like you got pressure from society to move out of home to get your own space or did you really need to get your own space um yeah so that's the question i'll start with this one <laughs> um you know i so for me i just wanted to leave home like no no one pressured me to do anything i was just like i just want to leave home I want to be independent. I want to just do my own thing, right? Um, but I thank God for my parents because my parents are like, yo, it's your first job. It's still your first year. How about you save? Um, save all that money. And then at the end of the year, you can uh, find a place, then start um, 
you know, start your life with some money that you can just buy all the things that you want all at once instead of just waiting every single month to get some, mm-hmm. to just get one thing. So I stayed at home for like a year before I moved out and that, and that whole process helped me a lot. Um, and then with the car, I had no FOMO for a car. In fact, I didn't want a car. I was like fine with taxis and buses and everything else. Um, until work started becoming a bit more hectic and I saw that, okay, there is a need for a car, um, but I chose to buy it at my own time. Mm -hmm. And even with that, my parents were like, yo, don't buy, don't buy it through the bank. So rather save up, get a bit of cash so you can deposit some money in. Um, and yeah, I was able to do that and I didn't buy it through, through the bank. I've got my own loan to buy the car fully. So my car is fully mine. Um, I just have to pay back the bank because when you buy it through the bank, mm. it becomes, yeah, the interest rate is like insane. So yeah, I think, yeah, I wasn't much, I wasn't pressured at all for that. Like I just wanted the freedom, but yeah, I, I took my time. Nice one. Anyone else? I feel like, I feel like the pressure came from myself. So I don't think my surroundings or society pressured me into you know getting things that i feel i should have at this age so um i'm a homebody so my parents love it when i'm home and they love seeing my face (laughs) so moving out is just not a thing for them like when i was in cape town all i wanted to do was like i just wanted to be at home again so with that, I think I, I bought my car because I can't do Joburg public transport. My anxiety just skyrockets. So I think the pressures are are just coming from myself because I feel like I'm trying to like find other streams of income now. So I'm thinking of going into property. And so it's just those things. Yeah, so I don't think it was my family or anything, like mm-hmm. just more myself. Yeah. I couldn't wait guys. Like the car was top of my list. I, I I didn't even waste time. I think a few months after getting my first job I was like, girl, like public transport for me was <laughs> Yeah, no, I uh Okay. Um I think we're done with um the career one. So now we're moving. I don't know, do you guys wanna cover financial literacy or relationships first? Or should I just go according to the list? Yeah, I'll just go according to yeah. the list. Okay, so we have financial literacy. Okay, I think I think that also like just fits well with um the topic yeah. on careers, right? So the first one is: Do you think you're financially literate? Are you budgeting and sticking to your budget? Are you saving money? Um, and if you are, are you literally like saving for long term? Are you one of those who are saving and then you? eat the whole money and then you save again you know that whole (laughs) cycle (laughs) so yeah i think i am financially literate but in my first year of working i really just wanted to to spoil myself so in my first year of work because i had to pay off my my honors fees like i paid them myself so i also wanted a few months just to you know spend my money like a crazy person um but i am currently saving and that's money i i don't touch because i'm trying to buy a house cash and you know so i think yeah i i budget quite well on a monthly and i do stick to my budget and a large chunk of my salary goes into my savings so I think I'm doing well on that front currently. Just the follow up question there, Fifi. Do you think um, studying finance kind of contributed to you being financially literate, or did you grow up in an environment where um, finance finances were like taught to you, like your parents like kind of played a part in it and so forth? Yeah, it's it's the latter for me. You know. Um, I grew up and I saw some of the mistakes my parents made when it came to their finances and I started 
doing research and stuff because I was like, no, these aren't mistakes I think I can afford to make. So I think it was just from experience of seeing the people around me because my older sister also was like a huge influence in my financial literacy because she's very open about her, her finances. So I don't think it was school. No, not because I'm in finance, but just from my surroundings. Okay. Anyone else want to take that question? Um, I think I'll answer as well. I think I've also become now more um, financially literate with, with, I think, past mistakes that I did do, you know, in training to the job space. Um, you know, new money has a way of making you feel some type of way. Um, it's kind of, you feel very liberated the first time you get, you know, your first oh. salary. Um, and you feel like you can, you can do a lot of things. You know, you make a lot of promises to yourself that, you know, I can get that. And then next month I'll budget for this next month. And then all of a sudden it becomes a lifestyle and then a habit. And you get yourself into some trouble. Um, so I think past mistakes have allowed me to become more uh, financially literate. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? That's it. Moving. <sighs> okay. All right. All righty. All righty. All righty. Okay. So my next question is: What other financial expectations did you have to suddenly encounter just because you started working? Or is that not broad enough? Does that question make sense? Um, is this in terms of like what contributing at home be an example of a financial oh, expectation? Shucks. Sorry, actually I skipped a question. My first question before that is do you have black tax and how is that holding you back financially? And then that's a follow up question to that question so do you guys have black tax or i you... did with fear initially and i think that's probably some of the mistakes that i should have um I, I learned from rather i think you know it's okay to say no to certain things sometimes in the family um you can't help them with everything um there are some some situations where you can assist in and there's some situations where i think your family should understand that you know they can't ask this of a child especially with their first job and all of that um so for me it's much better now but i yes i still do have black tags with my family okay. um for me i think i've been fortunate enough not to experience black tags because I help out because I want to, but mm -hmm. it's not a matter of it being forced out of me to help out, you know, mm -hmm. even when I say I can't do certain things because, um, like Fifi said, she saves a, a, a chunk of her salary. I do the same. So my mom understands that on a monthly basis, this is my budget. And if ever I have things to do, with that budget, excluding the, the money that I'm saving. And I can only help out, let's say, with X amount of money. That's what I can afford. She she, she doesn't expect me to, to offer more. So um, I think, yeah, for me, it's just a matter of me helping out because I want to, but it's not an expectation as such. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, okay, we're going to skip that other one about if you had other financial expectations that you suddenly had to encounter. Besides your employer, does your family know or does is there anyone else besides you and your employer that knows how much you earn, your exact amount, like the salary that you get into your account every month? Oh, well, I think with me, it's only my colleagues who are on the same level as me because although they tell us not to discuss our salaries mm. i feel like it's because they know that they'll pay a certain group of people higher 
whereas you guys have the same experience and the same level of qualifications but yeah. because maybe like the color of your skin you're going to be paid less so that's something my colleagues and I are very open about whenever we get um, increases we'll discuss like how much did you get how much did you get are we all on the same footing you know if we sorry my dad is just walking up if we have like if we're disadvantaged then I think it gives us the opportunity to actually um, speak up and mm. and you know like confront the relevant people about it but besides that no okay yeah I also For think me, it's very important can you guys hear me yes. my network is very horrible no we can hear you We can hear you, Maguena. Well, I can. Yeah. Yeah. I, also can. I think she. Or maybe, she, maybe she's lagging. So. Yeah. Yeah, but just to add on in the meantime, um, I also think it's important for us to share. You know, especially. Well, it's not, it's, it's, it's a very iffy subject sometimes, but it helps. I also think it helps. I had a conversation, I think, when I started and with, with, with some guy and it actually helped me a lot because I then realized that this guy was getting paid more than me, you know, and it helped me voice out or say something. So, yeah. It does help. Okay, Mugwena is coming back on. Songs, did you want to say something there? No, sorry, I missed the question. I wasn't here. I don't know the question. Sorry, that's why I didn't answer. Oh, I see your, your, your thingy on. Mugwena, you back? Bye. Yes, I'm back. Yes, you were saying? Uh, yes, I was saying, can I ask the question? About the salaries, <laughs> if anyone else knows how much you get oh. paid. Yes, uh, I have, my sisters um, know, uh, well, they might not know the exact amount, like, to the T, but, like, they know how much I do get. Um, because, like, when I signed my contract, right, I sent my sisters in HR, so I sent it off to her, I'm like, yo, I read this thing, but I need you to double check so that Nyan's would see, no one is offering me, you know? So, I, yeah, so she knows how much I, how much I earn. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. More than that, no, mm. you should not know. <laughs> Why don't you guys tell your parents how much you're earning? She's never asked me. <laughs> <laughs> that was asked the first time. No, after that, really. yeah, but she's never asked me exactly. Then, um, how much do you get paid exactly? No, never. <laughs> Hi, okay. Anyway, moving to the last topic, which is relationships. Yeah. Now, first question. Dating in your 20s, are you dating for fun? Okay, I'm asking those who are not married yet. But, um, Lois, you're still open to answer and say, what were your <laughs> views when you were dating? So, are you dating for fun? Are you dating for marriage? Or are you dating to explore yourself? B and yourself. C, <laughs> which is the which is <laughs> if I were to date now at my age, I would date for marriage and to not to know myself, but I don't know. Like in a relationship, I feel like it's a partnership, so you're able to explore yourself with someone. So I don't date for fun. I think that's a waste of my time. I have a lot of things to do, but. Um, I will date with the intention, but obviously I won't know the intention initially. But if I can see it, this is not going anywhere, I will leave. Yeah, I feel the same way. I don't date for fun. I'm not here to play games. If you <laughs> want what you want, you better tell me what you want because I'm going to tell you that I want marriage. Um, and if you want to bounce, bounce, my heart will be healed again. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So exactly. for me, it's like it's very important because. I don't want it to be just 
a relationship. There's so many people that we allow ourselves to be around and to enter into our lives. I don't want it to be to get to a point where it's intimate, jiggy jiggy. The goals are not the same. So yeah, no fun. It's nice to date, but no. Yeah, same here. It's it's long term. Um, I'm not dating for fun. Um, it's just a matter of seeing where it leads, but the yeah. intention is that it's 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 gonna lead somewhere. So yeah, we'll just see what happens. Does anyone not want to get married here, or do you all want to get married? I'm not sure about marriage anymore. Why is that? Like I want, I, I want like it was never, you know, growing up, marriage like was never a goal for me because my parents like always made sure that my focus was my career, it was school, it was, you know, making money and enjoying my money. So I only really started thinking about marriage um, in my early 20s. And living it was because of, you know, like the relationship my parents had, you know, like I wanted or I want that with someone else rather. But I'm, I'm not sure that you'd need to get married to have that. So it's just like I'm challenging a lot of my own thoughts around around the idea of marriage. Because, you know, um, I've always wanted to get married first before I have kids. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging my thoughts around the entire thing. So I want to be just a J. What's your alternative plan? Just have a partner and then cohabit together in the same house or still live your separate lives, but you are in a partnership? No, in, in the same house um, and it be like a, a life partner sort of thing, you know? Um, but even if it's in the same house, like I, I think my my ways of of relationshiping are very unconventional because for example i don't want to sleep in the same bed as whoever i end up marrying or whoever i end up with so yeah it's just <laughs> yeah <laughs> unconventional <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um what's the difference between a life partner and getting married um, I think for me, marriage is just the, it's just the official version of a life partner. So that's why I was like, I'm challenging my thoughts around marriage. Like, do I want to get married? Because yes, I actually do want to get married or do I want to get married because that's just how you're expected to to end up, you know, in your life because you know, like especially in the black society, it's seen as taboo to like love with someone when you're unmarried. So mm -hmm. she said oh, as always. So, yeah. So I wanted to be if I do end up getting married, I want it to be my own choice and because I actually want to and not just because it's expected of me. Okay. Yeah. Lois, before you got married, how was your dating experience? What was the reason behind your dating experience in your 20s? Um, I think... In my 20s, it was both wanting to, I think, discover myself, but my intention was always, I want to get married. So if I ever dated in my 20s, well, like dating in my 20s, I was always looking for somebody that I saw fit to be my my husband one day. So I never dated for fun or any of that. It was it, the intention was always I want to get married and if they fit certain criteria and that is somebody that you know I I would go for. Um I don't want to <laughs> pin it down to like it's a societal thing. I I think for me it's more on 
my my belief and my religion um i think that is probably the main the main reason why i always wanted to get married cuz you you know with the whole bible saying you know that not living in sin and all of that right i think that's what i didn't want was that i move in with a partner and then live in sin and all of that so religion did play a huge role with me wanting to get married thank you okay um now moving to like the choice you make in the guys you date right so do you make your decision of um choosing a partner based on like societal um pressures or demands or like goals you know relationship goals you need to to date like a tall dark and handsome guy or do you have your own expectations like do you date according to what you are really interested in or do you find that societal pressures do play in your decision of dating like in the guy you end up with or the guys that you date well for me um firstly i wanted tall dark handsome everything you have to have a beard if you don't have a beard don't even try to talk to me like i want to i want as well that i want to like everything you know um <laughs> until two, uh, a couple of weeks ago actually and um the holy couple spirit was like ago. a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago telling you <laughs> um the holy spirit was like sister please stop playing yourself <laughs> you are not going to ask god for those kind of things because it's not realistic it's not <laughs> yeah it's not realistic at all you know so i actually it came down to um character although i had character with all those looks um the looks i started to see it as a bonus if it comes yeah. it comes i if he has a beard it it comes with a beard if he's skinny it's fine doesn't matter um so now i just look at does he have a good heart does he have a heart after god um can i see him as a good father can i see him as a great husband so that's what i look at other things now i'm just like okay if it comes it comes <laughs> i'm not going to go out fishing for it um and also I've also had this expectation of how love is also going to come because I was like okay you're going to sweep me off my feet you must do this do that do you know so now I'm just like I guys even if it's in a taxi it's fine it comes as it comes <laughs> so do you think you've actually missed um dating opportunities because you always had these expectations and probably you you know avoided some guys I- maybe but um honestly the guys of the meeting they'd always miss that heart of the god they'd always miss it so even if he was hot and maybe i missed that opportunity to be with the dark tall handsome or with the skinny guy that i didn't think he would be the one but um i think every time when i when i find myself interested in someone they always miss that heart of the god thing so mm-hmm. that for me it was like okay it's fine Okay. Anyone else to take that one? I think I want to just add like on what Mukana is saying as well. I think you know it's not that you can't ask God for those things. I mean, you're right. It is a bonus when you you get what you are looking for. Um I think for my side, I was not I did not place what kind of like image on it of a guy or he needs to be tall dark and handsome with the beard it it came to me and I didn't realize that it came to me knowing that I fully gave my heart to God saying that you know what this is what I'm placing as a prayer to you if it comes it will come and it did come through you know being what I wanted and more so i think it's okay for us ladies to to pray those prayers it's okay for us to ask those things but not to go looking for them and saying this is exactly what i want cuz you know god really does know what we want in our hearts so it, it i'm telling you it's probably one of the most beautiful experiences that as women we will go through when we encounter that kind of love okay so but then when you put this in prayer right is it something you really want or is it something that society has pressured you to want so that's like no 
it for me it's always been what i want because my 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 relationship my very first relationship that i was in and it was one of the longest relationships that i was in i did it i didn't realize that it was based on society you know and it it led to heartbreak and it was one of the most toxic relationships that i had ever been in um so as long as it's what you want i think that is the best place to start doing what society wants will lead to a lot of heartbreak true 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 okay so should i move on to the next question um when you are dating or when you get married or when you get a life partner like Rifilwe, do you guys expect your partners to provide do you feel entitled to your partner providing for you as a woman well consider all the other factors right consider how you think of feminism how you think of you know all these other things just do you do you feel like you are entitled to a man to provide for you okay i shouldn't even mention have mentioned the feminism part but like <laughs> well, I now it might change your idea your answers okay <laughs> what is do i think i am entitled for a man to work for me yes to take care of me yeah like to provide for you like if you're in a relationship are you okay. do you feel entitled that your man needs to provide for you okay i think this question is a very difficult question to answer because for example i do expect my man to take care of me that's his duty he's a man he's he's like what is what is he gonna do if he's not gonna take care of me i don't understand then what he's what he's just been yeah what do you he mean he's to... a man I, I, <laughs> please I'm, I'm like elaborate on he's a man <laughs> he's a man the duty of a man is to take care of the woman and his house that i'm my duty to take care of him his duty is to take care of me he needs to provide like of course i need to work because we live in the society we live in of course i need to contribute to the house we live in because of the economy that we live in but regardless of that if we take that aside okay if i'm in a relationship with you me like me and a man then he has to take care of me dude you have to spoil me i'll spoil you too but it's a uh, maybe it's because my love language is gifts maybe that's why but he has to dude like i don't know but but a man doesn't have to provide for you because your love language is gifts. Even a man that doesn't provide for you can you still get you gifts. I, you asked me if I feel entitled for a man to take care of me. And my answer was yes. yes. Okay. And then I said, but I don't know. That could be because of my love language. But okay. I have that feeling. That is a something that I have. That I don't like. I don't expect him to like be ridiculous. Like. Louis Vuitton, Ferrari. I don't need that. Like, I'm not trying to like. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you're my man. Like, you know. Okay. My man. I don't know how else to explain it. No, I understand. I understand. Anyone else? I am um, with her. <laughs> really? <laughs> I am. You know, I really am. <laughs> it's an expectation yes okay so you might get disappointed because expectations lead to disappointments 
Yeah, I'm willing. I'm, 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 I'm open to that. I'm really open to it. I mean, looking at how my parents are. So my dad doesn't work, and he like I can't even remember the last time he worked like a, a formal job. Um, and my mom is the is the breadwinner. The way they did their relationship, I'm like, I don't know how we stayed, but whatever they did worked. Mm-hmm. And he provided in other ways, and he was there for us, and he was doing other things other than uh, providing money. So I do expect that my guy would, you know, I would, I would compare him to my dad. I'd definitely be like, yo, but my dad was able to do this. You, you can't, you know, you see. Okay. Okay. So the next question will be interesting. Fifi, were you, were, you were saying? I wanted to talk. <laughs> yeah. I, was, <laughs> I think it's, it's so tricky for me because... I look at it from the other side as well, you know, like if I'm expecting him to provide and let's say we're looking at it, um, the conventional way of, of provision, you know, like him taking care of you financially. I also look at what he would expect me to provide for him. Um, I'm not domesticated at all. I don't. I don't cook I'm going to have a chef in my house and cleaning I clean because be you know <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that your place is gonna be amazing it is it really is so I'm I'm very wary about putting expectations on people when I know that in that kind of setup, I'd be expected to to cook and to clean and to and I'm not going to do that. So I think if someone's son expected me to do that, I'd be like, then let me quit my job and you take care of me and you buy me my Mercedes and everything like that. So I'm I, yeah, I think I tread carefully in in that sense. Yeah. Okay. My label you? Um I agree with the other two. For me it's it, it's a matter of like they said the Bible, you know, it's it's his duty. But then again, um going back to Fifi, the expectation from both sides. It's it in a relationship it's actually um what can I say? It's it's a personal thing. It's, it's where communication comes in play, you know? Okay. You need to sit down and discuss, this is what I'm putting on the table, this is what I have to offer. What are you offering in return, you know? Because if I'm saying, if like Fifi, I'm not domesticated, for example, now, and he expects that from me, it's not gonna work. But if I say I've got other things that I can offer, and he's got he's gonna provide in a different way as well that I'm able to accept. Then I don't see a problem there. But for me, yeah, I mean, it's expected that the man provides. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this next question, I'm gonna ask two questions. Then, eh? um, so the first one is: Would you marry a man that earns less than you? Right, considering what you also said about provision. Okay, but now. We, we did establish uh, that provision doesn't only come financially, but from a financial perspective, would you marry a man that earns less than you? And when you date a guy, ne, um, do you look at the assets he have? If, if let's say now a guy is living at home and has no car, would you consider that guy, even though they have all the character traits that you're looking for? Or does that also play a part in you pursuing that man? I definitely would date a guy like that. <laughs> I would. I mean, if it ticks all the boxes that are very, very important to me, money comes. It comes. It's not something it, you don't. You don't stay in one position forever. And for me, as long as he he's got, he knows what his purpose is, and mm. he's working. He's working towards his purpose. That for me is more than enough. Because the thing is. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a car and leave the house and have my own apartment. 
Um, but then his situation might not be the same as mine. So I will need to understand that. But the thing is, another, another thing is, it just, it also goes back to what is he doing with his money? Is that, exactly. um, he's keeping him at home. So now I'm going to look at, does he spend his money recklessly, um, using it for things that are not important or also does he, does it go to black takes? So there's like different nuances that you now need to start asking yourself who would see why did he find himself in that situation um and what is he doing to get himself out of that situation and how will he then provide for me i mean of still has to pay so where is that going to come from so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think i agree also like completely with Mukwena. but um the problem I have nothing. I have no issues with how much money a man makes or what he has. My problem is him. Usually, when a man doesn't make enough as much money as you or doesn't have specific things, he's the one who's left with the low self esteem. So, I don't like. I don't mind personally, but I think he would be the problem because men are very insecure, and you always have to be, you know, I don't know, but you know, and like lifting him up so to ensure that he realizes also his potential because often as women we we date for potential so a hundred percent like i would date him but as long as he can remain you know with me he can remain a good man even though he is not where i am then it's fine because that's the problem i think the problem is then they start cheating because of low self-esteem other things play a factor because of that Okay. Any more comments? No. Yes. Maybe. Um, okay. Then my last question is, okay. So for those ones who are single, right? As you can tell now, a lot of guys are popping babies and you, the chances of ending up with a man with a child are also very high. How would you navigate such a relationship? What do you think about dating someone who has already started somewhere and they fell off and they're now coming into your life? Would you consider? First question. Can I add when I was, okay, let me say, there's some things that I don't compromise when looking, you know, into that kind of situation. So one thing that i know is that there are some women who can deal with blended families and there are other women who cannot deal with blended families and i for one was somebody that i i, I don't think i could manage to do it um i always wanted to be the first you know to to produce a child for my husband so for me as being single i knew that that was something that i was not willing to compromise on other things, yes, I'm willing to compromise on, but the child, the children part, I know. Yeah, and children are very difficult. Like, if that child is young, like a baby, baby, like, who's to say him and the um, him and the baby mama aren't like on and off? Like, it's just uh, uh-uh. the baby needs to That's be off. Messy. Yeah, it's messy, man. Like, and I need to know what's up and about. Like, that that baby mama is gone. Like. I don't wanna, I don't want, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't want that <laughs> Yeah, it's a very difficult, um, I remember I was once dated this guy, he had a child. Um, for me, the difficult part was that we'd make plans that, um, okay, we're gonna spend the weekend together or the day together, and I get the, the baby's there. And I can't necessarily be <laughs> mad about it because the baby mama decided to drop off the child like a piece of trash or something. But now it's taking away from the excitement I had about spending quality time with my man, you know? Yeah. And yeah, for me, it's just something I couldn't deal with. And I was just like, and easy ever again. Like I will never <laughs> know. <laughs> I also yeah. feel like if words get... Um, very complex because as Avant, we were not raised the same way. So if, for example, I dated a guy with a child and 
Udula was the baby mama and they raised with completely different principles than like I have. Like are our kids gonna be raised differently than the child you have with the baby mama and it must be so difficult to discipline a child that isn't yours. Yeah. Because how do you deal with comments like, No, you're not my mom or you can't tell me what to do, you know? So yeah, I think it could get very complex. Yeah. It does get complex, Jim. I I remember I liked a guy, uh, with a child. And then I was like, you know, like I, I felt the exact same way as Teresa. And I was like, you know what? I'm not compromising on this and all of that until I liked this one guy. And then I was like, okay, maybe. Then he had a second child. I was like, mm-mm. Okay. Yeah, this is a No, no, you tried. You. Baby mamas. I, can't. <laughs> <laughs> I am running. So I, I do I do agree with everyone. It's It's a difficult thing. The thing is you can't say that you wouldn't like right now it's saying i'm not going to compromise on that because i want my child to be the first child you have but when it comes when i'm in that situation um i find myself i'm just like here i am but then it's going to come back to firstly mutual respect mm. between baby mama myself and this guy's relationship and, and mutual respect for them as well and then there's the child and the raising of the child how does that child see me? How does the child see dad and mom? Mm-hmm. You know, like this, it's just too much. I don't know if I want it to be a baby. I don't know if I want it to be a toddler. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it to be a teenager, definitely. But um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very tricky. It's very, mm-hmm. very tricky. Yeah, true. It is tricky. Um, Okay, guys, any comments, last comments? You guys want to, do you guys That's think we is. missed something? I, I don't want to I don't want to have children, so I do consider dating a guy with <laughs> children, so that he doesn't feel like he left out. You know, he got he missed out on having kids and stuff like that. So I do feel like that sometimes. But hey, baby mama, I feel you there, sons. You know, sometimes the issue of kids. You know, I'm sure I I know I want to get married, but I'm sometimes uh, not sure if um, I want to have okay. kids. <laughs> you know, me too. So yes. maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> <I'll see. laughs> as i age <laughs> yeah i the think time is running out then i'll be like let me have kids let me have kids quick Ish. i don't know i'll see maybe when i'm 38 bro i'll i'll, I'll, I'll yeah. when it. time's about to be like i get it's over now if you don't have a kid now son I, it's, it's done <laughs> <laughs> you'll never have a child again i'll see you yeah as long as everyone else pops babies and i'm an aunt i am good Good. I will bring them to you. So Yo, I will bro. bring them to you. No, 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 no. But you need to, you need to be you here. Not be far because uh-uh. <laughs> no, you know, you know what kind of you aunt need to be I able am. To drop them off. You can't leave the country or like leave the city or something. You need to be a drivable distance away. No, but so then, <laughs> but then you no, know what kind of I'm aunt. Leaving. You know what kind of aunt. <laughs> I don't want to change nappies. I don't want to bath them. I don't want to feed. Okay, maybe I can feed them. Yes. But I just want to play with them and then do fun stuff. And then when they need to change nappies, you do it as the parent. If they need to be bought. What if they sleep over, Tamizo? You need to bath them. If they sleep Listen, over, if they have, if they no, but time, I'll probably help. They need to have a schedule for time. I'll probably have a helper, you know, who's going to bath them and make sure they're okay. But me, na and help. Like, that's not, that's not my, my thing. But anyway, I'm I'm kidding, guys. Yo, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, any last comments? Do you guys think we missed anything? Um, yeah. How did you guys find the session or the questions? I think oh. it was a great session. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I really yes. Yeah, I really enjoyed going through the questions you know with with other people because i feel like these are things we do think about um like when you're on your own and it's good to get different perspectives i think once in a while yeah okie dokie so yeah, I, agree. I agree and i think um there's also a, a whole lot more that 
we still need to talk about as young people mm. and so that you can also see things from a different perspective so yeah but for me it was great yeah Okie dokie, okie dokie. Thank I you feel guys. the same way. I just wish Tonga Izzy we could show her face, but it's fine. Your guys are the wrong. I haven't left. I haven't left this house since March. It must match. Yeah, <laughs> but but Tonga, this is a little bit disrespectful. You did you, you you did not even introduce yourself. You know, people are just seeing songs and then like you know. Sorry, like... guys. What did you guys say? You said your name, your your what, your age, your. Uh, what we do um and what else relationship status and yeah. if you want kids yeah my name is song is i'm 27. i what what i do i'm an accountant um do i want kids no is that it relationship status i'm relationship. single and i'm ready to mingle <laughs> after lockdown maybe next year yeah next year <laughs> maybe next year yeah okay thank you very much ladies i'm very thankful thank that you. you guys decided to take part in this and then um next week i'm probably gonna have the ones with the chains i'm just struggling to get the chains because they all just have the camera shy all of a sudden but anyway I'll try that and then the third week i'm going to ask you guys to join again where we all um have a conversation all together um probably you guys are going to say what your expectations are but i'll send the questions also and then yeah are you having the same questions with the gents also yeah similar questions i'll have similar questions but yeah with more of what but i want to know questions. like in terms of their like what was what what things were they here there was relationship career and finances yes finance. yeah. yeah i want to know their perspective yes it's going to be similar questions but like yeah more towards their pressures as guys uh, yeah because i think they have more financial pressure than we do as females that's just yeah that's what i want to know yeah. i want to know what financial pressure is this to spoil us what is this what's going on what, 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 <laughs> yeah. what kind i want of to make part of the conversation so oh no what kind of conversation are you guys having like I, so you, i'm so curious can we come in as audience you can come yeah, in as audience I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm on, now. okay don't tell us, don't tell them thank you for staying lois i actually expected you yeah, to we'll be earlier our names. <laughs> Hi, my name is a surname keep it busy exactly yeah we'll tell you so i don't feel like i can't come